Hey, what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. So today's video, gonna be going over the OCW test that I did for the seven rim mag. This is in Remington, uh, this is a Remington 770. If you'll remember, go back, watch the videos. Uh, a couple of the previous videos I've posted, I've shown the rifle. It's a one of the cheapest Remingtons that you could ever purchase, uh, if I remember correctly. The trigger, I did make a, an adjustment on the trigger. It was pulling right around five pounds. I was able to adjust that down to about a pound and a half now, which makes it a lot easier to shoot off the bench uh, at the range. And then one other thing I'm thinking about doing to it is free floating the barrel because the barrel is not free floated. It makes full contact with the stock, uh, the entire length of the stock on both sides. So it appears to be basically manufactured that way, right? It's not like they were trying to free float it and just failed in, in that regard so uh, but gonna go over the OCW test that we did today or hey it actually took me a couple of days to shoot this which is not the best way to perform a test because with all the variables that can go into impacting your your results on the target uh, if at all possible if you're trying to shoot a test especially something like this you really need to allocate enough time to shoot the entire test same day same conditions you know, same everything. That way you can just kind of minimize um, the impact of some, some other variables. So, but I also showed a video about this stuff using Peterson brass, really, really high quality brass, pretty much in between the price point of something like Lapua and Starline. So it's not quite as expensive as Lapua, but it's not as cheap as Starline. So it's kind of right there in the middle. Um, on the higher end of brass, so really good stuff. We've got 50 pieces here. That was what I ordered uh, from Duck Creek Sporting Goods. And so on this uh, OCW test, originally, because first of all, if you backtrack and watch the video where I shot the factory am ammo through that rifle, uh, it was the Federal 175 grain jacket and soft point stuff that I picked up over at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. And for what it is, for what the gun is, plus the fact it was factory ammunition, I was happy enough with the results, right? And the, and the two groups I shot, I shot an eight-shot group and a five-shot group with it. And both came in, they were like 1.9 inches. So just like what I said in the video, two inches or under is what it looked like to me. And that was, I was right on with that. They were 1.9 inches, both of them. So... From there, it just it looked like we could possibly find some better accuracy if we got into hand loading and, and dialing it in. Uh, also, I do want to free float that barrel. I think I'm going to end up doing that. But I wanted to do an OCW test with the new brass. It was kind of a this this test accomplished a couple of things, right? I'm shooting. Uh, I don't have any 175 grain bullets, but I did want to try some 150s. I had a couple of boxes of Nosler ballistic tips, the 150 gram ballistic tips, so I wanted to shoot those. Originally, I was thinking about using the, the Federal Fusion, because if you'll recall, the American Reloading Order that I purchased, those seven millimeter, uh, that seven millimeter premium mix, those all those pull down bullets and blims and all that stuff that I got from those guys, uh, the seven millimeter version, I had, I had a ton, or I have a ton, of the Federal Fusion bullet in, in varying weights, I think like 150, 160, something like that, 140 possibly, some something in the in that range, somewhere in there. And I've, I've got some 150s, and so I was originally just gonna shoot those, pretty much just to fire form the brass. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, you know what, it would be nice to kind of do more of an OCW style test and I guess I could do it with the pull down bullets, but then I started thinking, I was like, well, might as well do it with, you know, something I would load up and hunt with, which I would hunt with those fusions, but the ballistic tips, that's, that's one of my favorite bullets to hunt with. So I started going down that thought process. Well, I was looking up 150 grain bullet load data on Hodgson's website, trying to find a powder that I have that would work in the, in the seven rim mag. I settled on IMR 48, 31. It's not the best velocity powder and it doesn't give the best case fill either. Um, 
but it's one that I had on hand. It's one that I had enough of to do this test. And so that was why I went with that powder. If you look on Nosler's uh, load data, their max charge goes all the way up to 65 grains for the 150 ballistic tip and IMR 4831. And Hodgton, they go up to like 62.5, but they don't have the ballistic tip listed as a bullet option. They, I think they've got like a Barnes bullet and then I want to say they've got a Nosler partition listed. So I, that was the data that I went with. Their max was only 62.5. And so I worked up to 62.5. If you go off Nosler's, there's still two and a half grains of, of available, you know, powder that we could have gone with on the higher end. But I kind of stayed on the lower end of the, of the spectrum here. And also the primer that I used, so primer that I used was the CCI number 34 primer. That's the, the military version of the, uh, of their large rifle Magnum primer, I guess, if you want to call it that it's, it's made with the Magnum mixture, whatever that stuff is. Um, and it's a, but it's a much harder primer. And, and again, in another video that I did for another project, if you guys go back, if you'll recall the 280 Remington project I did for my dad, that the gun that he <clears throat> that he has is a little New England Firearms handy rifle, single shot, and I was getting uh, I was getting misfires using that primer, and I got a handful of them in in a really small sample size. I got a handful of them, which I thought was really weird, but then it made a lot of sense because the firing pin is a little bit weaker in that rifle. And it's just not, it's not able to actually get good ignition, get a good primer strike and set this primer off. It's, it, this is a much harder primer to set off than your standard large rifle primers or standard large rifle Magnum primers. So, and the reason they did that is for the, the semi-autos that's used in military application. And that's the reason they did it that way. They needed something a little bit, a little bit harder primer to use. Uh, but I've got like 1500 of these. So I just wanted to try them in this setup, see if they worked. And if, if, the, if, you know, if not, I was just gonna pull all the bullets, so it wasn't a big deal. But went with that, so now you guys know powder, primer, bullet, brass. So you got all that stuff. The cartridge overall length, I did go with Nosler's recommended overall length, 3.290 inches, all right? And my starting charge, so if my max, and I only jump three tenths, uh, three tenths jumps, you could probably do four uh, because of the the size of the charge weight, right? I mean, you're talking in the 60, anywhere from 60 up to 65 grain charge weight range, you could probably jump four tenths. But I went with three. And so if we ended at 62.5, that meant we were starting at 59.8. And so I'll just kind of let you guys look from the top down best I can and I tried to line up these dots um, as straight as possible you know luckily this cardboard it's it's, it's perforated a little bit or it's got these rip uh, ripples in it where uh, not perforated but it's got these ripples in it where I'm able to corrugated cardboard right, there we go where I'm able to uh, line up these dots basically in line fairly closely so that way you know that way it's, it's a little more uniform I can just kind of get a quick glance and say okay yeah all my dots are in a row now <clears throat> where's the point of impact in relation to my point of aim and that's really what you're looking for in an, <clears throat> in an OCW test is you're looking for charge weights that will give you the same point of impact right Point of aim, you know, you got your point of aim, <clears throat> point of aim, and then what is my point of impact in relation to that? And it, you're not necessarily looking for the smallest group because we can tweak that with seating depth. So that's not really the the point. Uh, the point is, what charge weights give me the same point of impact, right? Because then that'll that kind of leads you down the road of hey, this is a forgiving range of powder here where you know I can be off I can work within this window 
it gives me a tolerance band, right? Essentially is what it is. It gives me a tolerance band to know that, you know, if I fall somewhere in this range, my point of impact will not be affected, which for someone like me <clears throat> who only shoots at max will be like 200, 250 yards, you know, on game animals, you know, this is, <clears throat> this test is probably a little bit overkill for me. It's just, it's, I don't shoot long distance enough to, you know, to where the point, point of impact, you know, differences are going to really matter on the targets that I'm shooting at, right? Because the targets I'm shooting at have fur on them and they're within two, again, the furthest shot I've ever taken on an animal is 185 yards. So, you know, 185 yards, you're not going to notice you might have a little bit of point of impact shift one way or the other, but that animal is going to be dead. It's going to be a dead animal no matter what. So there you go. I kind of held you guys up over the target, let you take a look at it. So start at 59.8 and then work your way across, right, up to 61, and then come down here, 61.3, over to 62.5. Now, <clears throat> what I was talking about earlier on not, not being able to complete this test on the same day. So I feel like the results are still valid. I feel like everything is, because the conditions were almost identical day to day. I shot, shot one group, I shot 15 shots. So I shot three shots at the first five dots and you do it round robin. So I, I shot one and then the next one, you know what I'm saying? So you, you shoot them round robin. You don't just shoot a five shot group and move to the next charge weight. You shoot one shot from each charge weight at their respective dot. And then you go back and you keep, you repeat that process over and over until you're done. And what I did, <clears throat> I, th I think what the, the guy that created this method, what he recommends is once you go down the line, reverse it, you know, go back the opposite direction, which is what I did. And so started here, but on the first day, uh, I started out, I'm sitting here shooting. I shot the first few and then I get a text. Oh, Hey, by the way, you know, something came up. I had to go, I had to leave the range. I had enough time to shoot. I ended up shooting, uh, the first 15. So I shot these because what I wanted to do I wanted to get at least some three shot groups on paper so I could see like, Hey, is this thing even going to group, you know, is this even going to be worth my time? Right. Because what I didn't want to do was shoot through the first 10 and then, Oh man, I got to leave and come back. And then I, it's probably what I should have done, but I was a little nervous about, putting this combination together and just really hoping that this rifle wasn't just a piece of garbage and wasn't going to shoot two inch groups with these hand loads and which luckily it didn't. I shot those first 15, like I said, so it was a three shot group with the first five is what I did. And then I had to leave. So then that was the first day. Well, then I came back the very next day. Conditions are very similar. And I was able to shoot. So I, I, I came back and I went ahead and finished up the top row, right? The top row of my dots. So the first five charge weights, I just went ahead and finished those up. So that way I shot, I was done with the 25, right? And I could take a look like I was a little, I was somewhat surprised. I was like, man, these groups are not terrible at all for again for this setup this is not bad at all i was once i did that i was really looking forward to shooting the bottom group going up a little bit higher you know in charge weight and velocity <clears throat> and just seeing how that performed so then on the second session which is the next day right i start i start going a little bit higher in charge weight so then the second batch of five over here so the second 25 i start shooting them from left to right one at each dot. Well, I get to, I get to where I shot through, uh, what was it? Maybe, yeah, I shot through 15 again. So I shot through 15 of these, right? Plus those other, other 10. And then I shot through these 15 down here. 
Well, then I get another text. Something popped up. I had to leave. I had to leave the range. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm never going to get this test done. And But luckily, it was something that I was able to knock out real quick and get that taken care of. And I was able to come back to the range just an hour and a half later. So I was able to shoot all of these all of these 25 on the same day, which I really don't think any of that affected the overall results. Just looking at the groups, you know, there was nothing that was weird. Even when I was out there shooting, you know, between three different range sessions on two different days, there were not one time did I feel that one of the shots were, you know, off because of me, if you call it a flyer or whatever you want to call it. But I, for every every one of the 50 shots that I took, I felt really good behind the rifle on the bench. I made sure I took my time. I took two minutes in between each shot. So what I did, like I was saying, I, sh I shot the five right on the first day. So I shot the first one, then I took two minutes until I shot the next one, until I reached the fifth shot. And then once I did that, I would let the barrel cool down for about 10 minutes. I'd set it off to the side and then I repeat the process and I work backwards, right? going backwards, so shooting back across from right to left. Same thing, two shots, or two minutes in between each shot. And then when I finished up with those, the next five, then I swat, you know, stopped, let the barrel cool down for 10 minutes. And so I repeated that process the whole time. Now, ideally, what you would do, if you've got 50 of these loaded up like I did, what you would do, uh, if you have enough time and all that, you can plan out your range session better than I can, then you would start at your lowest charge, work your way all the way up to your 10th, right? Whatever that is. And then work your way back down. You know, you'd be shooting that way, not just five at a time or what, but I mean, you could do it. I mean, if that's, if that's all you have available to you, you got 25 rounds loaded up, that's perfectly fine too. But I had 50 and I, and I really wanted to do it that way, but it just didn't work out. And, and I just don't have a lot of time in terms of being able to go sit at the range for hours at a time, that something always comes up, right? There's, I'm always getting a text or a phone call or we, we stay pretty busy. So there's always something that I got to go do or something that needs to be done. It, very rarely do I have the ability to just go, all right, I'm going to go dedicate hours and hours and hours to sitting at the range to do this test. So, or to do a test, right? So, but that's it. That's that's the OCW test that I did for the seven room mag. Now, this is just good information and good data. Oh, I guess I could show you guys the group group sizes, which they really don't matter. Again, you're not looking for the smallest groups. So what I did, I wrote down just the gross um, number here. So that was before you subtract bullet diameter. And so here's what the final group size is. So not bad at all. I mean, it, this, especially when you get in, when you're talking like this gun was probably a couple hundred bucks, you know, back in the day, again, five pound trigger with a non, you know, free float barrel for that. I mean, that's not bad at all. It definitely beat my expectations. I, I went into this test slightly nervous thinking this thing is just going to be a dumpster fire and was very shocked. Very surprised. I was out at the range when I was shooting this, shooting this test. I just kept saying to myself, I was like, man, this is insane. You know, at what point is it just going to open up, start shooting two inch groups, throwing them all over the, the cardboard? And it never did. I was just very surprised. And to the, the point of impact, I mean, you'll notice it's, it's not, I mean, you do have some that kind of shift down a little bit. So I'd want to stay away from that where, you know, or something like this where you're high into the left, then you're dropping down, then you're back high into the left. You know, I, I would want to stay away from that range, but it, it just, for the most part, you know, everything is slightly high and to the left. There was nothing that was crazy, right? Where it, it didn't all of a sudden just drop shots, you know, down to the right or anything like that. So I was just very happy, very pleased with these results pleased with the performance of the rifle. And again, it's, it's, it's a budget setup. It's got a center point three to 12 by 44 scope on it that I picked up at Walmart. You can buy those for like 90 bucks. 
I got two of them for 90 bucks because I ran them on sale one day at Walmart. So it it's not like this is some amazing system I got going here. Um, probably going to put a different scope on it. I, I Yeah. If, if it's going to continue to shoot like this and then, you know, we go down the path of free floating the barrel and all that, and we really dial this thing in and get it shooting good, I'm definitely going to put a different scope on it. But that is where we're going to leave it boys and girls. So there you go, OCW test. This was IMR 4831. It, it shot really well. It seems it seems to be a good, this seems to be a good bullet powder combination for this particular rifle, the Nosler Ballistic Tip 150 grain and IMR 4831. So I need to pick up some more though. I'm completely out. I, I loaded up these 50 rounds, completely out of powder now for IMR 4831. So I'll just have to find some, pick up another pound, which again, once you do that, right, you would want to repeat the test because it's obviously going to be a different lot number and all that. So, you know, you'd want to follow this test up, do it again, uh, or at least break it down into maybe if you identify a range that you like, that you see where you go, okay, I really want to explore, you know, here, 61.3, 61.6. I want to look at something like that or, or whatever, right? Whatever the case may be. If you have an area that you want to you want to look at, you don't just need to make an assumption that hey, it's going to work fine because I bought the same powder. Yeah, but it's going to be a different lot number. More than likely, in my case, it will be. I can't remember when I bought that forty eight thirty one. It's been forever ago, so it's going to be a different lot number, and that could change the results of your test slightly, right? So you you just want to get that retest it and and see if you can validate those results that you got on the first one. So. That's it. That's where we're going to leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and y'all stay tuned. We got some more of this stuff coming up. It's, it's fun to shoot. Now, 50 rounds of seven rim mag, it's not the most fun thing in the world to shoot, but it's okay. I'll survive, I guess. All right. We'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.